Please join me. Thank you, Mr. Chase. So I moved to California about four years ago, and the three questions that people always ask me, no matter where I go or what I'm doing, is what made you move all the way to LA from little old South Carolina? It's so small, it's so different, it's slow moving, LA is so fast paced, so diverse. Second question I get, Prior to working at Northrop, I was working just down the street in SpaceX. So a lot of people ask, why did you leave SpaceX? <laughs> it's a great company. Northrop's a little bit been around for a while. So the third question is, are you Mexican? Really? <laughs> <laughs> All the time. People start speaking to me in Spanish, automatically think I'll be great for their daughter, who I've never met before. <laughs> really? Just always pushing the Hispanic culture on me, which I like, but I have to clarify and let them know that I'm not. So I grew up a good part of my life in South Carolina, from K to 12th grade. Lived in the same city. My dad was an engineer. My mother was an administrative assistant. Lived a pretty moderate, middle-class life. Uh, my parents worked hard to make sure we had what we needed, um, but didn't give us everything that we wanted. They wanted us to value and appreciate um, not having things and earning it when you can afford them. Um, when I was in college, I saw a trend of my classmates and friends who had no idea what they were going to do after college, like most people. Some worked the same jobs, some worked at enterprise rent-a-car or a teller at the bank, just trying to get their foot in through the door somehow just to get some work experience in. Um, the fact is, in South Carolina or in the South, there isn't a really strong economy, and partly due to politics, religion, uh, South is often coined as the Bible Belt, uh, influence on religious culture there. Um, and low wages. The, the wage system isn't because the taxes are low, the wages aren't as high. I knew from an early point that I didn't want to become like most of my friends and just stay in the same town I grew up in, raise a family there, although there's nothing wrong with that. I wanted to, I saw that they were slowly transforming in the townies where they developed a strong attachment to the community. They're going to raise their family there and probably end up ending their life there, um, what's, which is awesome, but it's not really my, my cup of tea. Uh, to me, life isn't about being comfortable and living in one place. It's about getting a, a global culture and um, experiencing different problems and situations in life. And it's not always going to be comfortable, but you're going to have to work through that. It's just a part of life. Um, I wanted to venture somewhere where there was a strong economy, it was liberated, an excitement of a city, you see skyscrapers and bright lights, and broken streets like you see everywhere in LA, mm -hmm. and a place where I can mo be motivated and grow my career. There's diverse people, diverse cultures, and food. <laughs> we all love food, and there's no better place than Los Angeles for a good, well-rounded culture of food. Um, I had some family out here, so I sold my car in the East Coast, packed up my belongings, ventured out to the wild, wild west. Been here for about four years now. I came out here, I was inspired by people of all walks of life, different income levels, working hard, really providing a life for their family. That really inspired me because a lot of people didn't have, um, weren't blessed enough to grow up in this country. They grew up in different places of the world. and they came here to make a good living for themselves. Um, so that's why I came out here. Uh, so going to my second question of why I left SpaceX to come to Northrop. So after coming here, I got my first big gig at SpaceX. It's been for about two and a half years. I loved it, it was an awesome company. And you know, it's, it's one of the sexy new aerospace companies on the block. Yeah. Um, it's been around for maybe 10 years. So why did I leave? SpaceX is an awesome company, talented engineers, innovative company, breaking barriers that haven't even been set yet. 
I enjoyed my time there, but however, there was a few setbacks. The hours. Ugh, I hated the hours. It wasn't a 980 schedule. It was more like a 10-100 schedule. <laughs> I would work 50 hours a week minimum, 10-hour days, Saturdays, 10-hour days. Sunday, I would sleep all day. <laughs> so the hours were really tedious. Um, also, there was no work-to-life balance. I just felt like there's more to life than just working, sleeping, and paying bills. Uh, we're set to do more than that on this planet. Um, there's no edifice there. So one of my goals in life is to get a master's degree and, and really uh, progress my career, but there's no edifice, so I couldn't, couldn't do that. The third reason, moving up in SpaceX is very difficult. Um, it's, it's a young company, so there's not many retirement options. Um, people get in, they work hard, they get the work experience they, in, they want, they really gain a lot of knowledge and experience and they, they get out when the time is right because it's such a young company, they don't have any pension plans or retirement plans. Mm -hmm. um, and primarily they hire mostly engineers to, to SpaceX. Even if you're a buyer or a supply chain analyst, they want to hire engineers so they can move in and they can move them around. And my third question I'm always asked, so I'm always meeting people start speaking to me in Spanish. And I have to slow down and let them know that, hey, I speak English also. Um, although I love the Hispanic culture, that's not my background. Uh, my dad's from Pakistan and my mom's from Bangladesh. Uh, a lot of my family background, my great-grandfather was from Burma, which is right next to India. So I have, or Indonesia, which I have a little bit of Asian influence slash um, Pakistan-Indian influence. So. Um, I speak three different languages, uh, most people don't know that, and um, my parents are really adamant about me keeping my culture strong, so we try a lot of different food and we dress up in traditional clothing sometimes, so that's a little bit of background about where I'm from and where I've been working at and what my culture is about. So, Thank you for that, Mohammed. Uh, you are the first person I have ever heard complain about the fact that random moms are coming up to you and telling you, my son or my daughter, sorry, is perfect for you, and, and that's that's a complaint of yours. So I, I don't know. You gotta you gotta introduce me to some of these people that you talk to. And I just wanted to also clarify. Well, first of all, what what are the three languages yeah, that you speak? Oh, okay. So Bengali, which okay. is the native language for Bangladesh, um, speak a little bit of Arabic and Spanish also. So four languages. Uh, four. <laughs> you're also <laughs> I'm conversational in Spanish, but I'm not like I can rattle off. The whole you're about to say I'm conversational in English. <laughs> that would be pretty funny too. And I just wanted to clarify when you were talking about the townies, and you said a lot of them are going to end their lives there. I wrote it down. <laughs> Did you mean right. that they were going to kill themselves? <laughs> They're all we just got oh, okay. Out. I just wanted to clear my statement. Your face was priceless. It's the same thing I thought. They're just going to grow old. They're going to grow old. I just wanted to make sure. Abruptly there. I don't know. South Carolina.